All right, so I want to cover some security concerns, and mainly that is, as I mentioned at the end of the last video, locking down our servers via their IP tables firewall. Right now, all the servers have every port on TCP open, so we can basically accept connections from anywhere. So I could do things like go to my application server here, grab the public IP address, and actually access it in the browser directly, circumventing the load balancer, and we don't want that. So what we want to do is lock down some certain things. I want every server here to accept SSH connections from me, and then I want the load balancer to only accept port 80 and 443 connections. I want our application server to only accept port 80 connections from the load balancer, and I want our persistent server with database and Redis to only accept private network connections from our two application servers. So let's see how to set that up. We'll start with the load balancer. I'll log in there over here and we can start using IP tables to generate some firewall rules. So I have some videos on going into this in depth so I won't explain the total inner workings of this. Just know that right now we have no rules on our input policy. In other words, we are not blocking any incoming connections. So. I'm going to make a shell script here because it's a little easier seeing the various rules I'm going to put rather than going through them one by one. So we are going to set the following rules. Each line here is a firewall rule. We're going to say anything can connect to the loopback network. Now the loopback network, the localhost network, can only be connected to locally. So we're basically just allowing traffic through our localhost network. The next line says allow any connections that are currently related or established. We're going to say to accept them. So that's my current SSH connection and other things. We're going to allow future SSH connections over port 22. And this is from anywhere, essentially, as long as it's over the TCP protocol. And then we allow port 443 traffic and port 80 traffic, our two web ports, so our load balancer traffic and my ability to SSH. And anything that is not these, that's not localhost, that's not currently established, that's not port 22, that's not 443, that's not 80, is going to get dropped. So we'll save and quit that, and I'll just do sudo bash firewalls to run that, and it's going to create all those rules. So I can do sudo ip tables l v, and we see that works. Now, those are in place. Let's just make sure that we can still go to our server here through the load balancer, and we can. That's great. And I'll do HTTP. This should work. If I get redirected, we know it works. I got redirected. It works. All right, so that is good for the load balancer. We are accepting SSH, HTTPS, and HTTP. 22, 443, and port 80. Next up is our two application servers, and our two application servers are going to have the same rules. We're going to do the same thing. I'll do sudo vim firewalls.sh. There'll be some bash scripts, and I'll set this set of rules. So the exact same boilerplate, allow loopback, or allow current related and established connections, allow port 20, and then allow port 80 from interface f1. In fact, that's wrong. I need f0 here. So I could have done this two ways. This way, I allow any TCP traffic to the destination port of port 80, where our Nginx is listing for web requests. We will jump to the accept target. And I have my things intermixed in here a little bit. We jump to the accept target, in other words, accept that traffic, only if it's on interface, network interface F0. Now, I could have said if this comes from a specific IP address, and I could have said only allow traffic from our load balancer IP address. But I'm also just going to allow any connection from within our internal private network instead. It's a little easier just to say as long as it's from the network interface F0. And anything else gets dropped here. So I'll save and quit that. I'll show you if config again. We can see that F0 is indeed the network interface for our private network. And I can do sudo ip tables l v. And there's nothing there, of course, because I didn't run our bash script yet, like an idiot. So sudo bash firewalls shell. And then we can check out our rules, and we see they're there. So loopback, connection-related, SSH, port 80 from F0 instead of from anywhere. And we should be all set. So let me do that on our second server here real quick. And I'll just go straight up and do those same rules. IP tables is plural. We have those rules. Great. So let's go to our load balancer and make sure it still works. We're still getting traffic through. I can log out. I can perform other actions. It's not just cached. Perfect. So we are still in business. Let's exit our application server here. And finally, we are going to head on over to our persistence server, the one with MySQL and Redis. So I will go to that IP address. We'll log in sudo ip tables dash list dash v for verbosity no rules once again i'll make our shell script all right we will do our user bin env bash and i'll just paste in our rules and we're doing a very similar set of rules here so our three boilerplate things to accept loopback network traffic related and established connections port 22 so i can log in over ssh 
and then these two new rules here. So my SQL is listening in port 3306, Redis listens on port 6379, so I want these two destination ports open. Just like the last server, I'm only allowing connections from within our internal private network, which is at network interface F0. So stuff within F0, our private network, is gonna be allowed on these two ports, which is where MySQL and Redis is connecting, so it should be good there. If it's not any of this stuff, we drop the traffic and that should do it. So I'll do sudo bash firewalls, then we'll do sudo ip tables l v, and we see our rules are there. This still works. This actually is not hitting the database, so let's make sure it actually does hit the database. And we're logged in. Great. So it actually did stuff. It could talk to Redis, it talked to MySQL still. We didn't block ourselves out, but our servers are now secure. So to cover what we just did, I was really quick. I have videos on IP tables on Service for Hackers. You should definitely check them out for a real in-depth explanation of what's going on. But we said from the load balancer, only accepts connections from port 80 and 443 and allows me to SSH. The application servers only accept, well, SSH traffic. I can log in over SSH, but they only accept web traffic from the load balancer or really from persistence from anywhere inside of the internal private network, because we said only allow traffic to port 80 from within network interface F0, which is where the private network is located. And then for the persistence server, we allow SSH from anywhere, but then once again, restrict access to MySQL and Redis only to F0 where the private network is. So that is a good setup for firewalls. We only allow the needed traffic that we have on each. We restrict network traffic for things like load balancer to the application and application to the database to within the private networks so they aren't spilling out into public networks anywhere. And we also lock down any access from other servers and other infrastructures and other private networks. So we have a pretty good security setup there. That's something you should definitely lock down, especially if you use services like Linode and DigitalOcean, whose private networks are not private to your account. They are private to the entire data center they are in. So for example, if I create a DigitalOcean server in the New York data center, I have a private IP address, but everyone else in that New York data center can also connect, try to connect to your server over that private network IP address if they can guess your private network IP address. So. That is not very secure. You should definitely lock down your servers, even over the private network in those cases. But in any case, that is it. This series on load balancing with Nginx covered setting up our servers, setting up our load balancer, getting Let's Encrypt and SSL on our load balancer, terminating the SSL connection, sending that connection to our two application servers, setting up a Laravel application, setting up the trusted proxy package so that Laravel correctly generated URLs and redirects to the correct scheme and port and host name. We talked about persistence like Redis and MySQL and how you need another set of servers, whether that's one server or multiple for your database and for your session storage and for cache. And then we talked about our security concerns where we locked down our servers in this last video we just did using IP tables to make sure our servers aren't able to accept connections from sources that we don't trust.